Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrong e na Bula FM, na Mandoa na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandoa na Serre. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Regengo, a Bula FM na Enacas. Na Langon Samu, do Ativio, na Bula FM, na Mandoa na Serre, no Sul. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Langon Jerry, e a Melambasa. Aldo Warong ay nambula FM nambandua. Bula FM nambandua en seri. In the news tonight, fishermen charged for breaking ban. Government invests 42 million dollars in Lomai Viti. And FRC as suspended direct intelligence denies fraud charges. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. The ban on Kawakawa and Dono is not to be taken lightly as 15 cases are now before court in what could be the first of its kind. FBC News can confirm tonight that people have been taken to task after they were caught receiving a 600 kilogram shipment of the banned species. Sign in Boiler with this exclusive. The haul is estimated to be worth $9,000, possibly the largest haul of Kawakawa and Dono since the ban was enforced. So these are some of the files that are now in process. The, those two vessels that, um, that um, we were involved, we were very happy with the level of um, cooperation um, that, that took place. Um, so the, the update um, essentially is, is one, uh, they're in the, that's one of the files that are in process um, for, for, um, for prosecution. All 600 kgs of banned kawakawa and donu confiscated were documented, photographed and securely stored at nearby fishery stations until investigations is complete. It is also revealed that illegal fishing is also taking place in the low waters. Principal Fisheries Officer Richard Viran says two vessels were boarded at the Moi Walu jetty in Walu Bay, Suva after the ministry received a tip-off. The due process will be taken for the formal actions and this leads up to issuance of fixed penalty notice right up to prosecution and at the, at the moment we're in the process of finalizing um, in collection of evidences and assessing the case files and developing the case files for the lead up to the prosecution. FBC News can confirm that one of the vessels which tipped off the authorities belongs to Gander Shipping, the second is the MV Brianna. The Fisheries Ministry continue to encourage vessel operators and members of the public to provide the information when they know and they can assist in the fight to ensure the sustainability of the banned species. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Government has invested $42 million in infrastructures development across the Lomaiviti province since 2017. This was highlighted by Prime Minister Vurengem Baini Marama while speaking at the opening of the Lomai Viti Provincial Council meeting in Sawaike village this morning. Baini Marama also highlighted that over $12 million was spent on building and maintaining roads, crossings and jetties across Ovalau, Koro and Ngao. Lena Reese with the story. The Prime Minister continued to thank youths in Lomai Viti for the active role they play in development and highlighted other new opportunities across the province. Yesterday, I opened another two solar projects at nursing stations in Nawaikama and Vandravandra. Government has also given another $250,000 to support agricultural projects, including Angona production. Australia recently announced that they'd be easing the import restriction on Angona, so it is certainly an exciting time to be in the Angona business. Chair of the Provincial Council, Churching Garnivalu, acknowledged the unity shown by the leaders of Lomai Viti that will enable greater development on the islands. We have just finished the traditional leaders uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a the strongest pillar, uh, shall I say, of all the meetings that I have mentioned in regards to the total development of uh, Lomai Viti. The Lomai Viti Provincial Council meeting will conclude tomorrow. Lena Reese, FBC News. Crossing mangrove swamps to get to school will be a thing of the past for the children of Nawai Kama and neighboring villages on the island of Ngao. This as the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of the Nawaikama footbridge was held today and the Prime Minister was part of it. Lena Reese again with the story. 
The Minister for Infrastructure, Tony Usamate, highlighted that the footbridge is expected to be completed by the end of November. Particular footbridge, I think we had the uh, laying what you call the foundation of the pile. So it's a project that's been carried out by the army engineers, and from the um, from the uh, presentation they gave, I think it's going to be completed by the month of November. But obviously, it's going to allow children that used to walk in the Ndongo area, and that uh, you know Ndongo uh, water coming through to actually give them some protection. The villages there used to use uh, all coconut planks. Meanwhile, the health minister, Dr. Feremi Wangai Nambete, highlighted the great need that had been met in nursing stations in Nawaikama and Vandra Vandra. So the office of the prime minister has been uh, supporting us by, by doing this project, which costs about 80,000 per project, which is the availability of, um, of solar, solar power to Nawaikama, Vandra Vandra and Batiki nursing stations. So that's being commissioned, the ones in uh, Wanda Wanda and Nawaikama. Um, but I think it's finished. It's going to be commissioned later. Dr. Wangai Nabete also revealed that a nurse practitioner and four other nurses will soon be posted to assist health officials currently serving in the Lomaiviti province. Lena Reese, FBC News. Suspended Director Intelligence, Compliance and Investigations from the Fiji Revenue and Customs Services, Shamim Khan, has pleaded not guilty to the fraud charges against him. It is alleged Khan was involved in fraudulent activities amounting to over $4 million in 2016. Catherine Krishna was in court today. Shamim Khan is charged with one count each of abuse of office and general dishonesty causing a loss. It's alleged that between January 2016 and May last year in Suva, Khan prepared an investigation report with false contents and prevented the Revenue and Customs Services from obtaining revenue of over $4 million. The FICA Council has informed the court that they will be relying on caution interview of the accused, while defense made it clear that they will not challenge this. Defense also stated they will be calling in one witness and are anticipating a quick trial. A three-week trial has been set which will start in March next year. The case will be recalled on October 31st for pre-trial conference. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The Fiji Oncology Unit has noted a major increase in child cancer survival rates. Dr. Lossolini Lewinengila, a pediatrician at the Oncology Unit at CWM Hospital, says this is a result of the ongoing partnership between New Zealand and Fiji. The growth of child cancer treatment and facilities in Fiji has generated results. So following all these efforts, the survival of, the, of our pediatric oncology cases have drastically improved. Survival rates have improved as well. Dr. Leweni Gila says they provide palliative for cases they cannot treat locally. Those that we cannot treat either undergo palliative care or they can be taken abroad if the family have the means to take care of the cost. Sadly, most of these untreatable cases are only offered, can only be offered uh, palliative care uh, in which the patient and their family are counseled and are supported through a period of time which is basically end of life for them. Because if we start pointing fingers, these kids will suffer. Because the people who have money, when their child is sick, they get in a plane and fly out. But we have children who are, you meet today, they are the ones that need transport back and forth from the hospital. So we cover that. The Wow's Kids Foundation currently supports 67 children being treated for cancer, including three who were sent for overseas treatment this year. Korit Andulala, FBC News. A new partnership was forged today through which New Caledonia will assist our agriculture ministry to increase livestock production. The ministry's breeding program is one of the key areas they're looking at under the cooperation. Kritika Kumar with the details. Fiji and New Caledonia have similar environment conditions and under the partnership it will be able to help Fiji develop specific programs for livestock farming. Declaration of intent uh, contains different uh, items of cooperation and uh, a big part of it is specifically uh, focused on the cattle but not only on crops. Looking at uh, partnering with New Caledonia in terms of assisting us in the embryo transfer program and multiplication of that here. There are other areas uh, within the agriculture sector for example 
uh, sharing genetic resources. The agriculture minister says this agreement will also help Fijians indulge in commercial farming. We are going big time in terms of incentivizing the farmers to get into commercial agriculture by getting them market signals. But we also need to uh, ensure that for them to push the frontier, we need to develop the base infrastructure. This is the first time the two Pacific neighbors have entered into an agreement which is aimed at reducing import, ensuring food security and improving the livelihood of people in the rural areas. Kritika Kumar, SBC News. Up ahead, U.S. Army personnel visit North Schools. And FMPF executives serve customers. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Personnel from the U.S. Army have been visiting various schools in Lombasa conducting health education outreach programs. It's part of Exercise Cartwheel, a joint exercise between the U.S. Army and the RFMF and is being conducted in Lombasa and Sabu Sabu. Eleanor Trangaiviu with the details. It's not every day that you get to see a U.S. Army personnel up close and personal. For the students of Korowiri Tovata Primary School, Today will go down in their history books as the day they did exactly that. This team of highly skilled professionals spoke to the students about hygiene, good sanitation, dental care and diet and nutrition. It's been more a chance to um, uh, just kind of reinforce and build upon what already the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education here is, is promoting. They also came to the schools bearing gifts, water bottles for students and whiteboards for the school. Whenever we do an exercise with a host nation, we try to bring along um, uh, other assets that can give back to the community, just as a way to say thank you and just be involved in the community. The visitation is part of Exercise Cutwheel, a joint military exercise that sees the U.S. and Fiji troops trained together in jungle warfare and urban operations. The team will be visiting more schools in Lambasa before heading to Savu Savu next week for further school and community outreach. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Two girls purportedly seen taking drugs in a Facebook video deny that it was drugs, claiming that they were merely fooling around. The girls came forward after their parents reached out to police. Police confirmed that the 18-year-old and 19-year-old have given a statement denying that any drugs was involved. However, police investigation is ongoing with the matter, now in the hands of the Criminal Investigations Department. The video shows one girl lighting an apparatus and instructing another on how to use it. The person filming is yet to be identified. Executives and the management team of the Fiji National Provident Fund provided services to members, pensioners and employees today. FMPF General Manager Member Services Alipate Wangai Rawai highlighted that this was part of the FMPF's 53rd anniversary. Priya Nand with the details. The Fiji National Provident Fund is the mainstay for a lot of pensioners and today celebrated its anniversary in style. Our office is in uh, Lotoka. Lambasa and headquarters here in Suwe, including the employers. Uh, we all have uh, managers and executives rostered in for the day. So uh, it's a time for them to come and experience you know, what uh, front office operations is like. Wangai Rawai says the FNPF is now in a better position to serve its members. Now the last, in terms of the reforms that we had completed, the pension reforms has now put the FNPF on a sustainable platform. And uh, all the reforms that we have done in terms of our structural reforms, uh, that's paid a long way in, uh, in uh, uh, re-energizing the FNPF to better perform its, uh, its, its core role. Pensioner Jimmy Weimani expressed his delight on being part of the celebration. 
Yes, I was with the NFPF when the thing was started, and I really enjoying for the service of the uh, NFPF staff. And uh, I've been joining it till I've been uh, uh, retired reti or moved move the state in 1995. A visit to disabled pensioners is also in place to allow them to share in the celebrations. Priyanand, FBC News. The competition to win the Buller Crown is heating up and contestants say their confidence has grown following the first public judging. The theme for this year's Buller Festival underway in Nandi is Hearts of Charity and the organising committee is raising funds for 16 projects. Philippe Nicasso reports one of the projects includes building an evacuation centre. The Buller Festival continues to be a platform for contestants to speak openly about the issues affecting our society. People coming down to the grounds, hearing such information that will help them educate themselves and them being aware of how effective cervical cancer could be. For some of the contestants, the first public judging helped them overcome their fear. Honestly speaking, I felt overwhelmed because it took me, like, it, it took me a couple of weeks to prepare myself just for that public judging and I felt so excited and at the same time it was really amazing to be out there and like it's an open exposure for me to go and express myself to the people how I'm like public speaking and sort of things like that so it was pretty amazing last night. Regarding the winning part I'm just here to enjoy myself and just be who I am if I have if I fulfill all the requirements all the um, what is necessary in order to become a queen and if the public wants me to be their Miss Bula Nandi then yes I would be happy to become one. Eleven contestants are vying for the prestigious Miss Bula crown which will be known on Saturday. Philip and I Caso, FBC News. The Grace Road Group operations in Fiji says it's business as usual despite their church leaders imprisonment. Grace Road Church founder Shinok Ju was this week convicted of charges of assault and confinement and sentenced to six years in jail. In an email response to FBC News, the company says there will be no adverse effects on their businesses and their ongoing dealings here. They also stress that they disagree with the court's decision and have taken immediate steps to appeal in a higher court. Meanwhile, the Fijian government says while they note the sentencing of Shinok Ju, they can confirm that a joint investigation with South Korea into the church's activities is ongoing. And it's business time now with Koroi. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up, Fiji Airways Inc. co-chair packed with Air India. And in going Fiji, more developments for Nakasi to meet demand. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Mitchie FM because, because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Dago Mama. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Leading business tonight on Tuesday, Air India inked a code share packed with national carrier Fiji Airways to provide convenient connections with three cities in India. The partnership will come into effect this month. Code sharing allows an airline to book its passengers on its partner carriers for travel to destinations it doesn't service. The pact will allow Fiji Airways to place its FJ flight code on Air India flights from three cities to Hong Kong and Singapore and in turn will allow Air India to place its AI designator code on Fiji Airways flights from Hong Kong and Singapore to Nandi. Cheating traders continue to amaze the Consumer Council with their deceitful acts, but this time it's a pharmacy under the spotlight. Chief Executive Sima Shandil says the pharmaceutical sector plays an important role in providing safe medication. A pharmacy has been issued a warning letter for tampering with medicine expiry dates and this matter has been referred to the pharmaceutical board. The council will now start nationwide surveillance to ensure pharmaceutical products are not tampered with and are safe for consumption. 
I would say that this is a clear breach of trust and ethics. I'm calling on to the pharmacies, not only the pharmacies, but other uh, traders, whether it's uh, food products or not non-food products. Please, if you are, if if the product has uh, expired, please remove it from the shelf. Gary from HFC Bank now joins us with the latest from the money markets. The U.S. dollar has risen to a two-year peak against the euro and hit a two-month high against the Japanese yen. This was after the U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell ruled out a lengthy easing cycle and delivered the first rate cut since the 2008 financial crisis. The U.S. Central Bank cut rates by 25 basis points this morning to shore up their economy against risks, including trade friction. Meanwhile, the Bank of Japan Deputy Governor said the Fed's decision to cut interest rates would likely have a positive effect on the global and Japanese economies by keeping U.S. growth on a positive footing. With the Fed out of the way now, investors will keep an eye on the ongoing earnings season as well as Friday's U.S. jobs data and trade developments. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. A rate cut by the U.S. Federal Reserve has stirred the market somewhat. The Fiji dollar once again rose against the Aussie and the Kiwi, as well as making a solid gain against the Euro, but dropped slightly against the other currencies we cover. Taking a look at commodities, prices fell. Crude oil dropped below $58 a barrel. Gold was down more than $20 to $1,409 per ounce. And silver closed down at $16.17 per ounce. Major subdivisions are being developed along the Nakasi Nausori corridor to cater for growing housing demand. Nausori Town Council Chief Executive Diana Ryan says the development includes a housing subdivision which will have 500 lots, a Supreme Field subdivision in Nakasi, and the Sauniwanga subdivision. Narayan says more businesses are also investing in Nakasi. He adds other major developments include the construction of new fire and police stations. Other developments are also in pipeline for Nakasi area. As you know that it is coming a very, very ideal uh, area as most of due to decentralization of businesses from the major entrepreneurs they are shifting towards Nakasi because of a very, very ideal location and uh, potential for further expansion. $671,000 was spent by the Education Ministry to rebuild the Bar Muslim Primary School, which was damaged by T.C. Winston in 2016. Minister Rosie Agbar is urging the students to make the most of the new improved facilities. Agbar says parents and teachers also play an important role in education. <laughs> I can say we spent about 671,000 uh, as part of our rehabilitation program for Bombs in Primary School. And, and, and as, as we hand you the, the, the newly renovated facilities, I only have one request that we look after this. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Corey, and good evening in Sports Tonight. Excitement builds for Dean's semi finals. And flying Fijians team named for Canada Clash. This and more coming up. Nandango Merea, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, waiting to go to India Nandi, yang do marata kan awak rong ana radio Fijian. Ya, asna betili, ya, marga Monica. Radio Fiji One, semi-final match between Dhuvu College and Ratu Kandavulevu School this weekend is building up to be an epic contest. With Dhuvu backed by the Nanranga province at home and RKS fixed on defending its title, the two finalists from 2018 are set to light up Lawanga Park on Saturday afternoon. Apanisa Wangai Rundobu reports. 
players from Dubu have proved their worth in the competition following last week's quarter final and they will all go out again this weekend. Dubu College is ready for the match. Yes, we understand that RKS is the title holder. We wish them also the best. Please uh, play good rugby, but yes, Dubu College is prepared. Meanwhile, Vodafone Dean Sander 18 defending champion Ratu Kandavulevu School has set the bar for its junior grades ahead of this weekend's semi-final. Following a tough encounter with the LDS in the quarter-final match, the defending champion is more confident and hopes to maintain the momentum. We understand that this is another level of competition. The boys are working on their um, mistakes from last week and uh, the team management are working hard to rectify the mistakes from last week and prepare well for the semi-finals. No, that the competition will intensify and we are playing the best uh, team from other schools. In the under-18 semi-final at Lawanga Park, QVS faces Maris Brothers at 2.05 p.m. while Dubu College plays RKS at 3.30 p.m. on Saturday. You can watch both matches live and exclusive on the FBC Sports channel. Dubu, FBC Sports. Flying Fijian star Lock Leone Nakarawa has been given the captaincy role for round two of the Pacific Nations Cup against Canada. Coach John McKee made a range of changes to the team with Dominic Wangan Muroto given a break after playing three consecutive matches. Josh Matavesi will start at fly half, pairing up with Henry Seniloli at halfback. Semi Ranranra has recovered well and will get his first run in the Flying Fijians jersey this year at outside centre alongside Tale Watumbua. The wings will feature Eroni Sao and Josua Tuisova, while Kini Murumurivalu starts again at fullback. The Fiji Airways Flying Fijians face Canada at 5.15 p.m. on Saturday at the NZ Stadium in Suva. And Eroni Sao is confident the Flying Fijians have the might to defeat Canada. Sao, returning from injury, says it's an honor and a blessing for him to put on the national jersey this Saturday, that to win his first start for the Flying Fijians. Uh, for the team, uh, been out for uh, three weeks now, and uh, back in the team, uh, finally made it to the starting lineup. So really a blessing, uh, glory back to the <coughs> to the God uh, for His uh, plans for me. Canada says its much anticipated game against the Flying Fijians is a great opportunity for the side. Canada were crushed by the USA in its PNC opener last weekend and hope to improve their game this Saturday. Assistant coach Kingsley Jones says they anticipate a strong flying Fiji inside out to put things right in front of the home crowd following their defeat in Japan last week. The real important thing for us is to be really excited about the opportunity to play against, you know, a really good Fiji team. After travel, after a tough game against USA in Denver, we will see some changes in our team. Uh, but those are exciting changes and opportunities for people to, uh, to, sh to put in a better performance, I guess, in certain areas than we did last week and build on the real good things that we did too. Day three of the 2019 Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament has been rescheduled due to unfavorable ground conditions. Fiji Football Chief, Chief Executive Mohamed Yusuf says the matches which were supposed to be played tomorrow will now be played on Sunday. The semifinals and final have been rescheduled for next weekend. The Fiji FA says the ground condition has still not improved, but they are hopeful the weather will be fine in the next two days. In Sunday's Day 3 matches, Nasinu will take on 90 at 11 a.m., Lambasa meets Tavo at 1 p.m., Reo plays Lautok at 3 p.m., and Ba take on Suva at 5 p.m. People can expect a stronger Lautoka side with the return of striker Benjamin Totori. Totori arrived in the country last night, and sources have confirmed that he will be part of the team, will be part of the team for the remainder of the BOG tournament. Altoka became the first team to qualify for the semifinals, leading Pool B with six points. That's it from Sports Tonight. In new media after the break, Apple Pay says it's growing faster than the Internet's favorite payment service, PayPal. Details coming up. Radio Fiji 
पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे कुमार नकाफी में रहता है रेडियो फीजी टू सुनता है रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It's been a wet day for those living in the silver area. Apart from that, the other centers were fine. In the west, it mostly stayed fine. Now, you must be wondering why it's always sunny this side. Well, that's because it's the leeward side of the country and it's mostly facing away from the winds. Eastwards from Pakhavarasuva, it poured the whole day today and is likely to continue into tonight as well. And up north, dual weather situations, light showers to connect tonight. At sea, east to south, east winds tend to 50 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 12.46 a.m. with high tide at 6.58 a.m. Sunrise at 6.33. For tomorrow, it's Friday, which means today is Friday Eve. But unfortunately, we might have to see showers. Tomorrow's temps, most centers will be cool in the lower 30s. And looking further on to Saturday, is this some festival of showers? Because clearly, we are continuously, continuously getting them. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jack. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, should there be more harsher penalties for restaurants not adhering to proper hygiene regulations when in operation? Yes, I think uh, the penalty should be there because it is too hard to have it. The penalty should be because it was like it's very important. I think they should be given penalty because we're paying money for good service and it's important that they operate in a clean environment and prioritize hygiene. Go home, we get really bad stomach and then especially kids and they, they uh, because our work and our school life. So yeah, they should be penalized if, if it's really bad then yeah, probably close down the restaurant. Recapping the main stories for tonight, fishermen charged for breaking Kawakawa and Dono ban. Government invests $42 million to develop infrastructure in Lomaiviti. And FRC has suspended director intelligence denies fraud charges. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, should police patrols at night be increased? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, taken at Sawayake village on Ngao Island. The church in this picture was built around 60 years ago using coral as cement and stones. On the right is the new village hall, opened yesterday by the Prime Minister. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, via Facebook page FBC News, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe, stay warm, good night. Today FM, Today FM rocks. I'm Linda Form. I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Yotoka and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.